Good afternoon and welcome to vlog 58. It is June 16th, it's Father's Day today here. I, well, you can probably hear the rain outside. The weather has gone completely crazy here, but it's raining so much, it's nearly impossible to record in between showers. I recorded the Dutch vlog earlier today, but it's now um, 15 past three, and uh, I have two finished objects for you. Uh, one finished object that is not knit by me. I have three works in progress, some acquisitions, and a gift that my daughter brought me from Peru. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Linda. I'm also known as Vol Hobby. My webshop is um, wolhobby.nl where I sell hand dyed yarns, knitting notions and my own patterns. I am married to Rob. Uh, he helps me out on many uh, things. Um, that have to do, that have to do with the web shop, and um, we live in Nijkerk. We have three grown children, but they all moved out. And this is my corner of the internet, where I tell you about my knitting, dyeing, uh, designing, and stuff like that. Let's get started. I have two finished objects, and one of them I can actually show you. That is my Yolanda socks. And this pair of socks is a very easy to memorize pattern. And um, I um, knitted these for Yolanda. I designed them for her as well a few years ago. And um, she sent me her pair recently that I mended for her and I decided to knit her another pair. Uh, they are not very long because I ran out of yarn. Well, I did not run out, but I could not um, make them any longer than this because otherwise I would have run out. And the only thing I did different to my first pair of Yolandas is that I added a slip stitch um, part here because this is the place where she had holes in her pair. I told you in the in the last vlog that I was amazed by uh, how I designed the heel flap and that I was in doubt if there was a mistake in the pattern. So I had to I had to say to myself, trust the pattern. And then I was amazed by how I made this. So this is my first finished object. Next week on June 22nd, um, I will carpool with Yolanda to Rotterdam and um, I will give her a new pair of socks for um, picking me up and driving me there. And I'm looking forward to that because it is so much fun to spend time with her. The second finished object is not here anymore. I finished my Maue sweater for Kiersey. Um, she asked me, well, about a year ago, I think, uh, if I could knit her a sweater that she bought years ago and she wore it to bits and um, well, of course, it was uh, nowhere to be bought again. And she asked me if I could design her something similar. And it took me a while, but earlier this week, I finished the first version and I will start the second version soon. Um, in the first version, um, I, will, I will put in pictures uh, because uh, she already took the sweater home. Uh, <laughs> I, 
I need to have it back because I, I even forgot to weigh it. So she needs to bring it uh, with her when she visits visit when she is visiting us again. But um, I decided to use kit mohair for the ruffles on the sleeve because I was worried about the weight of the sleeves. I used a double strand of mohair and I had to knit three ruffles. And in the end, I probably added in as much weight as when I have you when I would have used my own merino. So I'm going to knit a second version where I will be using my own yarn for the entire sleeve as well. Um, the name Maue, Kirsi came up with it. Um, the Dutch word for sleeve is Maue, but not in the way that the pattern name is spelled. And um, most of the Dutch people had to laugh really hard when they saw the name. Um, I thought that she wanted to use the proper word for Maue in the beginning, but uh, I was wrong. So uh, Maue will be available later this year uh, after I have knitted um, the second version. Well, I'm going to knit uh, the back of the shoulders, the back of the back, uh, the front parts until I have reached the underarm. And once I am past the underarm for a tiny bit, I can knit one sleeve. And that will give me all the info I need to um, whip up the rest of the pattern. And then I can do a call for testers and have it tested. And then later this year, the pattern will be available um, to everyone. But I'm so proud about how this sweater turned out. She wore it to work the day after because the weather here is, well, not uh, very, very good. Um, and she wore it the day after and everyone was in awe about her new sweater. So that's nice. I will uh, start uh, version 2 very soon, but I am pretty busy dyeing and designing and so, well, I will put in as much work as I can in a week. Um, yeah, well, and this has um, quite some priority because I really want to finish this pattern and have it tested. I need to grade it once I have um, knitted the top part and one sleeve for the second time. Then I need to start about grade, I need to start thinking about grading, and I want to have it tested in all the different sizes to be continued. Um, there's one thing that I did not knit. One of my sample knitters did it, Mariette. And she knitted me a sweater scarf in my Met Appeltjes colorway. The sweater scarf is a pattern by uh, Chantal, uh, who is also known as Knittitude. And you basically uh, knit, uh, knit one pearl one, for a very long uh, piece and this will be sewn closed. So this will be one of the cuffs. Then you will wrap the sweater around you and then you can put in the other arm in the other cuff. I won't show it here because this is not the right size for me, although I was surprised about how well it fits me. But um, once you have knitted this, and this part is knitted flat, and Mariette said, well, if someone is familiar with knitting in the round, there's really no good reason to not knit the cuff in the round. So, uh, but once you have knitted the knit one, purl one cuff, 
you start um, a pattern with knits and pearls and you add width or height to your knitting and once you are at the right size you will knit for forever this still needs to be blocked so this will be much higher than it is now but it's still curling up um, you knit, 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 knit until the other end, then it will become smaller again and then you knit the other cuff. I will put in a picture here uh, because Chantal is showing it so much better than I probably would. Kirsi wants to have a sweater scarf as well, so I'm going to knit one in my Olivande colorway and I decided to make it a summer knit along. Um, we will have a cast on party on June 28th and then we will um, have the knit along run until the end of August. If you want to knit along, just see if you want to grab a kit from my website or if you have yarn in stash or close by, just buy the snowfall sweater scarf pattern and join in the fun. Uh, it will run on Ravelry and Facebook, so if you want to, and, and I will probably come up with a, an Instagram hashtag or something. If you want to join in, just, you are more than welcome to. Let's see, works in progress. Currently, I'm working on my Buds and Blooms, which is a pattern by, by uh, Debbie, who is uh, Yarnaholic52 on Ravelry and Instagram. And this is her pattern, but, and I'm dying kits for it. Um, you need a main color with an assigned pooling color run, and you need a contrast color. And the contrast color has a texture po textured part, uh, a beaded part, a lace part, and well, um, whatever else there is to come in the pattern. And the main color needs an assigned pooling color run. And when you are on the right side, you will make the buds. And when you are on the wrong side, you will make the blooms. I came up with three uh, kits for this. And all the kits are, um, you are using complementary colors. So one side of the color wheel and the other side of the color wheel. So orange and green are opposite to each other, but uh, that makes them go very well together. And um, I am using my new high twist yarn for this, which is really, really nice to work with. I will have the kits available on my website um, later, I think, somewhere in July and the knit along will run um, in September. So it's a really nice knit. Um, you are never bored and uh, I really like how it's turning out. I'm almost at the widest part and then it won't uh, mirror this shape for the way back. But well, um, to be continued, you will see that when I am further along in the pattern. I once I finished Kirsi's Mauer. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, my Buds and Blooms is living in my um, girl with a pearl earring. Um, Dutch painter's bag that I bought at Hobby Bags and uh, Kirsi's sweater was in my vintage fabric bag by Rachelle Bell and once I finished her sweater I wanted to do I wanted to put another project in that bag right away and one of the bigger projects I still need to finish is my brioche. 
This is um, a cardigan that has been sticked already. This is the inside. Usually you would see this as um, one side of the brioche knitting and this as the other side. And Mathilda Kruse decided on showing the um, more subtle uh, side of the brioche on the of the brioche on the outside. So you have a, a round yoke with brioche knitting, and um, I uh, already finished the body, and the bottom hem is also done. I only need to. Um, make the button band and of course the sleeves. I started the sleeve already but somehow I misread the pattern and the first two decreases are too far, uh, are, are too many rounds apart but that's okay I will just finish the rest every fourth round um, and I will just um, mimic it for the second sleeve. This is a very old work in progress. It was a birthday cast on in 22, I think, or maybe even 21. So it's about time I'm going to finish this right. Um, so it is in rotation at the moment, but I'm not sure if it will be finished soon because um, the second version of the Maue has a high priority. Um, but then again, this is a super easy knit. I only have to knit round and round and decrease every fourth round. So this is super easy TV knitting or uh, the knitting for, knitting for the road. So um, we will just see what happens. And I kind of, I kind of long to finish this. Uh, this is not in my own yarn. I completely forgot to tell in the Dutch floor, but this is in Fiucolana Pernilla. And this is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It is a non superwash, so I need to be careful with this. And um, well, of course, I bought three colors. This is the main color. This is uh, color 973. And I have the... One of the brioche colors is color 810. And the other color is... Uh, 973, probably not. I just told you that this was 973, right? Oh, there are two labels around this one. Let's see, this is 825. <laughs> so that is back in rotation, but we will just have to see how much knitting time will go in this project. My last work in progress that I'm going to show you is in a bag that Esther made for me, that's this one. And this is just on my dining table. Um, and whenever um, we are having dinner or lunch and if we um, sit down afterwards or if I am finished before the rest of the people at the table, I just knit a, a little, just a round or two or three so, as you can see, I only did one pattern repeat on this one. This is my hex appeal pattern. It is a very easy to memorize pattern. And um, so I can just put it down and pick it back up as much as I want. I will move the stitch marker up. And this is not a priority at all so the stitch marker is, is up now and whenever i have just a few minutes i will knit on this one i bought two new 
pouches, notions pouches from Studio Opnieuw Leuk. And uh, she is also using many vintage fabrics. And uh, these are the two that I bought. I did not really need new pouches, but I ordered a project bag um, for my sister that my mom was giving her for her 50th birthday. And uh, while I was ordering the project bag, I saw these two and I just could not resist. And besides, I have so many new project bags and I really like to have a notions pouch in each and every one of them so that I never have to go look for stuff that I knit while knitting, that I need while knitting. Um, and I was on uh, a fair earlier this week where I bought needle stoppers. I bought these ones. I bought two sets of this, one for me and one for my sister. These ones. And these. And there was another booth at the fair that sold, um, well, earrings really. But I really loved these little golden turtles and decided to buy a set to use as stitch markers and progress keepers. Um, Kersi, my daughter, has been to Peru for two months for an internship and she came home on June 6th. And of course, she brought, well, of course, uh, she brought presents for all of us. And she brought coffee for Rob, Peruvian coffee. And of course, she brought yarn from, from, for me. She went to knit you in Lima. And she brought me these two beautiful skeins. This is Amano yarn and this is uh, this um, yarn is called Barmi. It is 70% baby alpaca and 30% merino wool. It is probably non-superwash. It says Warmi gets a fresh makeover with hand dyed yarn and painted colors reflecting the luscious flora and fauna that the Highlands offers. Balanced in a beautiful blend of baby alpaca and merino wool, this yarn invites to take a trip through the Andes with eight unique color stories which transports straight to nature. It is 100 gram, 150 meters or 164 yards. This colorway is uh, 6100. They recommend US size 8, 5 millimeter needles. And I have to come up with what I want to make. I have 300 meters or 330 yards. And um, I am not sure what to do with this yet. If you have an idea, what I could make with this, please leave a comment in the show notes because I would love to hear what you would make out of this. Don't, don't you think it's beautiful? I absolutely love the colors. Um, I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed um, seeing my finished objects and my works in progress. And if you would like to join in the Snowfall Sweater Scarf Knit Along, please go check it out on Facebook or Ravelry or check out my website for any kits that are available. And I hope to see you next time. For now, I wish you happy knitting. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.